All right, kids. We're here to talk tiny houses, and I'm here to give you a uh, a speech, I feel like. And we're going to go through a couple different variables. What I'm going to do is start out with a little bit about myself. And I will uh, then go ahead and uh, give you a, a nice little rundown. We're going to take a tour of the Apple Blossom Cottage. The Apple Blossom Cottage is something that... I designed and built specifically for nightly rentals. We do it on Airbnb. Just Google it. Uh, Apple Blossom Cottage. It'll come right up. Uh, we are rated one of the top in Vermont. Uh, we have a very high occupancy rate of in the 90%. Per Although it's uh, empty right now because of the current affairs, uh, Vermont is opening them back up and allowing us to book after June 15th. Uh, we typically have several buildings here that we rent out here in Jamaica, Vermont. We're located in southern Vermont, just uh, four hours from New York City and only three hours from Boston. We're located right here in the Green Mountains and just a few miles from Stratton Mountain Ski Resort. As you can see on the screen, I started building dog houses back in 1995. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to run a business. I was a carpenter. Uh, I started bringing scrap home. I honestly had a Subaru, two dogs, and a skill saw. That's it. I did day labor. I'd work in the different carpentry jobs. I'd bring home the scrap. I didn't know what to do. I built a dog house. It sold. I built another one. At one point, I had 50 of them on the front lawn. This was long before the internet, long before email, and I would use classified ads. I would use uh, my cordless phone attached to the landline, and uh, people asked for sheds. I built a shed, post and beam, rough sawn, very Vermonty, very traditional just like the uh, century-old barns that are still standing here in Vermont today. I use hemlock framing, and I use eastern white pine for the siding and the trim. When I built that first shed, people would walk into it and say, Wow, I could live in this. Well, today that's what we do. So whether you're looking to house your stuff, house yourself, or house your critters, we have solutions for you. We do a lot with the homesteading crowd, and we take a look at each individual needs to understand what it is that what they want to use the building for. And that is crucial to how we guide you. Now, as we continue to move forward, remember that any of the designs that we produce can be put on to a trailer. So any of our designs can be attached to wheels. We'll often run through the understanding to find out what you're after. Essentially, tell me, how often do you plan to move your building? Do you treat it more like an RV where you want to explore the country? Or do you want it on wheels simply to bypass some zoning laws? Maybe you want it on wheels because you're not sure where you want to be in the future. You want to be able to have that ability to pick up and move your house. The expense of a trailer has been a back and forth, and many different people have opinions on whether or not it should be on a trailer and on wheels. I often tell people that it's $5,000 just for the trailer. That's a broad number. and you can save that self by putting it on skids. Even a building on skids can be picked up and moved. We do it every day. I do have online a quiz that will help you quite a bit in understanding what your budget is and what is most important to you. When we're talking about comfort features, we wanna know how much of a, are you looking to rough it or are you looking to have all of the amenities and comfort features you're used to growing up in your parents' home? Do you want a flushing toilet, hot water, 
Uh, do you want a walk-in closet? These things are critical in the design phase and understanding where your budget will fall. Now, I have a call center on staff today, as I do every day. My call center on staff answers these questions and guides people every day. You can buy any of my designs in a kit, fully assembled, or as DIY plans. You can download those right now from the website. I'll even give you a free set just for jumping in there and signing up. This is kind of odd speaking to somebody here. I'm not even sure, but thanks for jumping in. I do want to say thank you to Jason and Zach for putting this on, tinyhouse.com. Thank you for the invitation and inviting me in to talk with today. Again, if you can hold off your questions until uh, the end, I'll leave some time for Q&A. We have a uh, 30 minutes programmed here. Uh, I've gone through how I got started. Uh, today, uh, my company has 80 employees. We're located in South Londonderry, Vermont. I've uh, moved the operation from Jamaica to South Derry. It was only a two mile move. I bought a large industrial complex where we produce all of our products here in Vermont with native rough sawn lumber and we ship out across the nation. We ship mostly for free on the kits throughout North America, uh, continental US, Eastern Canada. Uh, we can ship anywhere worldwide. I have personally built over 10,000 buildings uh, since 1995. Uh, now, typically these days, most of these go out in kit format. Somebody else puts those together. Uh, so what I've done is taken my designs and go ahead and write those cut lists. Uh, gotten the organization down so each piece is color coded and part numbered. Comes with a highly detailed set of plans, which is usually about 60 to 70 pages long. I've been doing tiny houses long before it was a thing. I started way back in the late 90s and all through the 2000s. By 2004, I started putting everything into a kit format, and today I sell predominantly kits. Uh, we call it a PCK. PCK is pre-cut kit, where each piece is color-coded and part-numbered. We tell folks, if you can... If you know which end of the hammer to hold, you can put one of these together. Now, I do have a new website up, folks, if you are uh, so inclined and would like to uh, see that. We do have uh, the website here. I'm trying to bring that up for you. Fumbling, fumbling. There it is. All right, our new website. Yep, you can see we have a sale going on, ends Monday. Uh, no pressure, though. <laughs> and what I do want to show you guys is that um, we do a nice scratch and dent, which is very, very popular uh, for folks looking for a solution right now. Uh, with the current situation, people working from home, it's been a popular thing for people to jump in there and get something that they can use right away. Now, I'd really like to encourage and, and repeat myself here about this quiz. Uh, the quiz here, I encourage each one of you to take a, if you can. What it does is starts to understand what is most important to you. And when we look at the critical criteria of a tiny house build, we really want to know what your comfort features are. Now, this quiz is designed specifically to educate you and start to get you on the discovery phase of understanding what is most important to a tiny house build. Uh, at the end, it'll give you a uh, rundown and a synopsis and, and guide you onto what you can expect uh, it might cost. So it will set you up with a, a budget. Uh, priceless. If you guys are interested in pricing, it is all there. Um, 
and I want to keep moving on here. So let's go back to my slide. Got my cool little zigzag thing here. Let's jump right into it. How? Huh? This is the Apple Blossom Cottage. Now remember, I built this specifically for myself. It is in Jamaica and is at my own home. And I built this and I plugged it in. It does have a flushing toilet. It is heated with gas and electricity. It does have hot water on demand, which is run by propane. And uh, it has a kitchen and cooking. Uh, I chose the colors personally to fit in. You can see that the building is on skids. You can see them right there, six by sixes. This building can be put onto a foundation or a trailer. It's 12 feet wide. And when we transport it over the road, it is road legal. It goes with a wide load. So this would be more of a, a park model. It sits on a wood frame and it is built to be under the height restriction. It's built at 10 foot six, allowing 36 inches for the trailer. Now this building is simply sitting on blocks on a gravel foundation. You'll see in these pictures as we click through that the building will rest on a field stone foundation that I had dry laid after the building was delivered. Here's a nice picture of the inside, professionally taken. These were taken soon after uh, the building was completed back in 2014. I took quite a few pictures this morning and I will share with those as we go through. I've got a lot to share with me, so please stay with me. I see we have 282 people live. Good job, Zach and Jason. So, Yes, you might say the tie-dye. Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh, that's awful, it's too bright. Well, we do like the tie-dye over here, so my girlfriend, she put that together, she put the curtains on. It's been a good hit, people seem to like it, and we go with it. We even put in a lava lamp for them. Okay, what we're looking at here now is the bathroom. Now we'll take a look here at the base of the toilet you'll see that the floor system is a two by six. We had to raise the platform up to get the trap to fit in there. Uh, the trap that fits in there and uh, prevents the gases from coming up out. Uh, so that was one little thing that we had to do, but the bathroom is very comfortable, plenty of space, you can turn around. It is heated with this electric heater on the wall. I love these things. They're Envy heaters. You can find them right online. They're about $100 a piece. Very efficient, and it costs about $30 a month to run when it's uh, working full time. All right. The entrance to the building, we have it arched. And. I put together some cabinets here. We use some barn sash windows. Now, th these pictures are still the older ones. We're getting into the fresh ones coming up soon. If you want a floor plan, this one's a little fuzzy on the quality, but go online, you'll be able to download. We offer it in several different sizes. And, uh, we offer it in both FA, fully assembled, and PCK. And again, any of these designs can be put onto a trailer. So if you'd like to transport it yourself, we can make that happen. All right, this is the outside of the building. Doesn't look like much. Let me show you, keep moving forward here, and I'll show you some pictures coming up. Uh, my company has been rated one of the top in the country, fastest growing, two years running. Quick little shameless. Let's get right back to our tour, though. Welcome to the 802. 802 area code, Vermont. If you'd like, uh, if you have questions right now, uh, Envy Heater, Envy, E-N-V-I. If you'd like 
questions answered right now, you can go to our website and call the toll-free line, 866-297-3760. I have people standing by that can help you with that right away. Here's a picture of my factory here in the sticks of Vermont, mountains in the background. And you can see all the little buildings that we keep staged in inventory here. And these are the buildings that we work out of. So if you do have questions, go ahead, reach out to, to the toll free number and I'll be happy to answer uh, some questions here as we move through. I have quite a bit of pictures to share with you. And I'm bringing those up now. And we can flip through these and I'll show you some of the ideas. Um, we had to make a over here with the uh, pipes showing. We had to compromise with that. We had to make sure they don't freeze, couldn't be in the outside wall. The walls are very thin, they didn't fit inside. So we had to compromise there. But um, if I did this design again, I would like to switch the position of the toilet with the position of the sink. Other than that, I really like this design. It's very comfortable. It sleeps five people very easily. And uh, the only concern I would have is to switch the, the toilet and the bath, the sink itself uh, to swap the positions. And I think that would be a lot more comfortable in the bathroom. Yep, yeah, right here at the apple tree, you can start to see the positioning of the foundation we put in. A little something to let you know where we're located. Here is Vermont, and we're smack dab right in the middle, right in the Green Mountains. So come visit us sometime soon. Give you a little background here. We're going to walk around the building. Now, these pictures were taken this morning. Uh, just as I got up this morning and to give you a fresh idea of what that building looks like today. A uh, little something we put in there for the guests, keep them entertained. How did the 802 area code come up? You can Google that and find out for yourself. We give uh, the place a place to park. We also give them uh, plenty of things on the inside to look at as far as books and games. Now in here, this picture here, you can see the light sensor we have uh, for the outside porch lights. Uh, you can also see the venting for the AC unit. It's directly installed into the wall. Right below it is the exhaust for the propane heater. All right, here's a nice close-up of the way we did the foundation. These are dry laid, and it was done after the building was delivered. Uh, so those are just very carefully, meticulously pushed into place. And here's what it looks like today on the inside. Very similar to what it looked like when we first built it. You'll notice some updating. Close up of the exhaust for the heater. Uh, the board above it, we replaced the heater. Uh, we went with an Empire first. Uh, it wasn't what we were looking for. The Renai gave us better return. We use an 8,000 BTU Renai heater. Uh, that's direct from the gas and that's a direct vent through the wall. Close up of the bunk bed. The outside of the heater. Now we're back to this picture here, and I want to explain this. This is very critical to understand what we're looking at here. These are part of the mechanicals that feed the building. Uh, how do you hook it up? How do you plug and play? Well, this little structure here that you see all the insulation, my pictures are out of order. We'll go through and understand why and how each one of those is, is critical to the, to the building. It's supplying these services to 
the building. For instance, this antenna here is part of our Wi-Fi network that supplies all our tiny houses here in the park. Uh, what this does is gives them high-speed internet. So if there is no television inside the tiny house, but if you have an iPad or even your phone, you're able to watch and stream video. That's some close-up details. A little something to keep your shoes clean out on the porch. Here's your porch. I give them a, a nice little woodshed there. So uh, we have a fire pit. So the outdoor cooking and outdoor living with the fire pit and logs and picnic table. And we give them free wood for the guests. I oftentimes include very uh, decorative details. This was handmade here in Vermont by a local glass studio. And uh, that's the light right above the entrance door. You can see the skid poking out right here, how we had to lay the rocks around the skid. On the other side there, it's just barely closed up. It's just barely sitting there. There's your fire pit right off to the side. The entrance. Definitely got to keep a bottle of sanitizer close by these days. There's your lava lamp. Yeah, living the good life. You don't see the screen share. Uh-oh. That's not good. I hope you can see it now. All right. So some of the interior features here, uh, we all need to make sure that it's as comfortable as possible. Uh, there's the inside of the AC unit with right below it, you'll see the heater unit. Everybody seems to love this little table. We found it on Amazon. Uh, it just folds up, folds back down. So if you'd like to bring your food up to you closer or your laptop, you can do that. It uh, folds up real nice. The futon there is very comfortable. Folds right out and sleeps two people there. Uh, in the bedroom, it sleeps three more. And that's how we're coming up with five people. Ah, the shot skiing. You'll see some pictures of that later. I encourage everybody to try that out. Uh, the kitchen sink. Uh, this is the solution that we chose for cooking. Uh, this works very well. We replaced our original solution for this one, and it seems to be working out quite nicely. Uh, a little bit of a learning curve on understanding it, but um, works great. Uh, so I encourage that, and that's all it is, is what you see. Uh, it's not connected to anything, and you can just pick it up and move it. Again, the toilet. Again, I always prefer a flushing toilet, especially if it's going to be a rental. Uh, a compost toilet or something else, other solutions, we offer all of those. Nothing beats a flushing toilet. Here's a close-up of the NV heater. Very, very simple, very affordable. Uh, it will not heat the cottage, but it will keep the cottage from uh, freezing the water. Uh, so uh, it takes a long time to heat the air, but once it's done, it's more efficient to turn it on once and leave it on for the winter than it is to only use it when you need it. And the bathroom sink hung to the wall. And there's the uh, bath. You can see the shower behind it. We chose one with the glass doors and they slide. The, <laughs> uh, the wine glasses, sure. 
here is a solution for the microwave and a toaster oven. Again, very, very simple on the appliances. Uh, if anything happens, they're very affordable just to simply replace. Uh, but they've had very good luck uh, with the solution here rather than going for expensive um, appliances. We give them free coffee. If you'd like to come stay, come have a cup of joe on us. Ah, so so for some of you uh, mechanical nerds, uh, you want to take a look at the electrical and how we have it set up. I do have 100 amps running into this. It's coming off of the main house. It does have its own meter. Uh, we've got everything broken up. Uh, it was done by a professional licensed electrician here in Vermont. Everything was done prior to shipping. So this entire building, including the furnishings, were... Uh, installed in the house before we shipped it. Um, uh oh, my time is up. I'm ending in four minutes. I think we should go to answering questions. Uh, if if you guys are planning to uh, ask me some questions, I think now would be a good time. So here's the bunk bed. This is the top bunk here. And then below it is a, a double. So we have a single over double bed. Fits nicely right into the bedroom. Here's the close-up of the Renai heater that we're using. And you can see 8,000 BTU there. Yes, it is an induction. The heater is gas. I use a gas heater with an electric backup. I always encourage a thermostatically controlled backup system if you have water in the, in the house. So that will prevent your food from freezing and of course your water. Uh, there's the underneath of the sink, very traditional looking, just like in your main house. Just everything's just a little smaller. Um, well, I missed the mechanicals and I'm still looking for those pictures. I'm gonna show you that in a moment because that's very important to understand how the building will run. So I'm gonna run through that. And we're getting into the closet right here. This here is the exhaust fan for the bathroom. Uh, so all it's doing is creating a negative pressure within the house and removing any odors, uh, especially also humidity. So it's keeping the uh, air circulating inside the house, which is very important to uh, understand if you're going to do a tiny house uh, to keep the air quality uh, positive. There's a pressure tank. Because I'm so far from the well, I decided to put in a separate pressure tank. It's the blue thing here. That's a pressure tank. You can see next to it is a filter for the water. Uh, this was all done prior to it shipping. Uh, this was done, again, by a licensed professional plumber. Uh, the propane, what we chose is a Renai uh, propane gas water heater. It's on demand, works great, never any problems, direct vent, and it will produce as much hot water as you need and you'll never run out. That's the interior of the closet. And right on the outside of the building, has the connections. We dug a channel from the main house all the way over. Uh, you can see the main house back here. 
And what we did was tied in the communications, electrical, and plumbing. So we brought fresh water over. And there's your propane service. So it's got its own bottle uh, right on the back of the building. And that was very easy to install and maintain. Here is the little shed off the back. Now this was installed after delivery. Uh, this is the inside of it when it's opened up. Uh, the electrical and the plumbing is all in there. It's all been spray foamed in. Here is when I just opened it. We keep it packed full of insulation. Uh, you can see the panel out in front. All it does is adds that extra layer of protection from the cold winters here in Vermont. We usually don't have any problems unless it goes below zero. We do have a heating line, a water line inside. We just turn that on. We've never had any problems. So that fits very tightly. It's very compact. And that supplies all of your comfort features to the house. The circle here below is the tank. It does have its own uh, wastewater tank. So that gets pumped out. I just did it for the first time since 2014. So about every five years. The entrance to the building, this is what it looks like right now. Uh, so if you were to come to visit, this is what you would see. Thank you everyone for joining me today. It's been a pleasure to show you this. Again, 866-297-3760. That'll get you right to my people if you have questions that you would like to speak with. This is my office where I'm speaking to you. This is on wheels. This is my home office that I built just a few feet from my main home. And this building is eight by 16, eight by 10, only 10 feet of it is insulated. And I'm in this building right now talking to you. Uh, I built this specifically for my home office. Stay tuned, I, if you have, if you can, I have more pictures here for you. We'll get to my home office and I'll show you a couple more rentals I have on the property that I built. I think we have some duplicates. We'll flip through these and they'll be coming up, I promise you. How about we do it this way? All right, here's my office. There's a loft, sleeps a single, up right above my, my head right here is the loft. There is a hammock chair in here, believe it or not. It's right here behind me, hung on the wall. It does fit in here. I love, I absolutely love heat exchangers, the mini splits, the electrical solution for heating and cooling. You see here is the heat transfer um, right on the wall. And that's the only heat that I have in this building. And I heat it throughout the winter, uh, no problems, no issues. I do have running water in my office. There's the little sink there. Uh, you can see the fridge and the microwave. Uh, that is sitting right here next to me. And this is where I'm sitting right now. This is where I'm talking to you. This is my home office where I'm working. I have my phone system into the corporation. Uh, and what you see there is my desk. It folds. It's hinged. So it will uh, bend over. So the um, behind me, that's a Murphy bed. It folds down. It's a queen size bed, sleeps two people. So this tiny eight by 10, 80 square feet will sleep three people. It does have an outdoor shower and it does have a toilet. It has a, um, one of the alternative toilets that we sell online. And this is right outside my window.
And I built this uh, three years ago, two and a half. Oh, that's the outdoor shower. Here's the outdoor shower for you. So what I tried to do is see how small of a space I really need. This was more of an experiment. It's still a work in progress, uh, but it's a very small space where I hope to have all of the outdoor area in edible gardens. I guess that's it for that one. And if you guys are still with me, this one is also on the property. I did not build this, my company did not build this, but it is here, it is one of our rentals. Uh, you can also Google that, Green Mountain Tiny House, it'll come right up. Uh, that is also found on Airbnb. There's the inside. Now you can, hard to see, but take a look at these stairs. Uh, they're, they're very well done with the curve. They actually swoop and spin right around. And each each stair has a drawer that you pull out. A lot of work right there went into that. All right, and I also have, if you guys are still willing, I have the Buttercup Studio here. Oh, Angus got in the picture. <laughs> uh, the Buttercup Studio is another rental I built in 2014, same time I built the Apple Blossom. It is attached to the main house. I attached a 12 by 16 to my 200 year old house. And I built this as a uh, additional space. It has a stacked washer and dryer in the, in the bathroom. It does have a flushing toilet. There it is. The bathroom is very small, hard to get pictures here. And I'm just running through now. And I appreciate you guys. I know you guys gotta jump off. So I will wrap this up here. And thank you guys again, 866-297-3760. If you have additional questions, go ahead and have my staff see what they can do for you. We chose some nice bright colors for the walls. Now I really like the arch I did here. It's a little loft above the entrance. Uh, so that can also be used as a sleeping quarters. As a rolling library ladder to get to it and another futon. So this tiny little space here, which is about less than 400 square feet can sleep one, two, three, four, five people comfortably. There's the kitchen. This is a very small space, 12 by 16, with the attached bedroom and bathroom. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Again, to the, to the organizers, I appreciate the invite. I hope to all talk to you. If you'd like, go ahead and social media me. You can find me on Facebook. Go ahead and friend me. And uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time today. Yes, enjoy the speeches.